Hello, welcome back here, friends. It's me, Odo. We are back in our campaign of Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Uh, we are in Dresden. And uh, we are running around and trying to do some smaller. Um, and I saw that we should bring Jaren to do something. Yeah, don't know if that will work. You know what? I've noticed a certain cyclical pattern in my life ever since I met you. Something happens that leaves me positively intrigued. Then I descend into a death, into the death's fear and anger. Then I start to think that it's not so bad. The curiosity comes back, and then something even more dreadful occurs. Hmm, interesting. Demon attacking my home and the city around it was unpleasant enough already. But I thought I could compensate for that by striking up a curious acquaintance and having some new experiences. Then my dearest cousin threw me right into the middle of a crusade, and just when I started to see some positives in my current situation, gargoyles kidnapped me. The slaughter in Dresden following my triumphant rescue effectively put out every spark of optimism that I had managed to get. Now the city in our hands again, and it's getting more and more tolerable. To stay here. I feel surprisingly good and I'm even beginning to find the city rather enjoyable. This brings one very reasonable question to my mind. What is the next outrageous and dangerous mess you're going to pull me into? <laughs> but an over the verbose and bleak attempt to thank me and impart just how much you enjoy Dresden? I have a couple more perilous trials and insurmountable challenges for you. You really like the sound of your voice, don't you? Yeah, let's take the third one. Do you really think someone like me is capable of experiencing such virtuous feelings as gratitude and affection? Most certainly not. My intuition betrays you. I was just mocking you. Hmm, of course. And therefore also was were definitely some sharp insults hidden under all those florid turns of phrase. Such is the way of aristocrats and politicians. And yes, I do like it in Dresden, much to my own surprise. Okay, that's nice. I'd love to visit Heaven's Edge and see the Erendale Estate Sun. Oh yeah, this is the thing that we need to do. So let's take it. Hmm. I was just about to mention it myself. I've been thinking now that I'm in the middle of this whole crusade nonsense. I simply must devise new ways to have fun. With all the recent commotion, my birthday completely slipped in my mind. What if we were to celebrate it at Heaven's It's not far from here, and you'll get to enjoy a banquet in an inn and one of the other haunted house. Hmm. So, I'm eating noggy eggs. Mm. Love. Mm. Aaron seems to have trouble getting the words out, which clearly indicates how rarely he has to ask for anything. Since you're my superior and I'm your advisor, I'm obliged to ask your permission to leave for the festivities, and I want to invite you too. I'm sure the commander can free up an afternoon while the soldiers are on leave. Are you really? Oh. 
Are you really going to throw a banquet at the very place where your whole family died? Darren purses his lip for a moment before replying in a bored drawl. Yes, oh, what a bit. Am I supposed to weep and quake with fear for the rest of my life? I've stayed away from the damned place for ten years. Now, now I'm going to return there to drink, dance, and be merry without a care in the world. You can keep your squeamish disapproval to yourself. Mm. Mm -hmm. We got it, yay. This was one of the... <laughs> People say that you're deliberately trying Queen Galfrey's patience, is that true? Does it even matter? Hey, cat. Look, there's some things that I can throw for you. Run! Ah, uh, what a small, slow cat. Does it even matter? All of Mandavian high society has declared war on me. They either despise me, or they are trying to steer me back onto the right path. And I am doing everything in my power to keep them on their toes. I relish the prospect of all the fun this mess, fun this mess in Canapres will bring. Bring grins from ear to ear. I shall either commission a song about the great Canabras fiasco from a certain talented bard, or confuse the jewelers with a rather tall order, a batch of silver dragon toys which det with detachable heads. Give me a week, and they will be in every shop in the capital. Hmm. Okay, we can do something good, something chaotic, or something evil. The heroic Derevid Dragon who died for our future deserves respect mockery. But make sure it's really easy to rip the wings off your dragon. Well, kids are going to love it. Your jokes are silly and childish. If you really want to get your revenge, then make your enemies suck. I see. Thank you for your answer. Okay, we can take one once once in a while we can take something chaotic. And next time we'll take something lawful. I promise. So be it. From now on, you are my muse. <laughs> May I ask you a few personal questions? I'd like to talk about you. Ugh, no, I really don't want to know all about this. Violating the laws of Golarion, confess your crimes. Oh, okay. I confess. I confess to all the crimes you want to pay at my door, even the ones you don't. The misdeeds warrant only the harshest punishment. Banishment from the crew. Do I, do I really want to punish him? I don't. Bit. I think the Aeon is not true neutral, it's lawful neutral. I'm not. Not plus two. But there is no true neutral mythic path. I'm rather. Could have done some part, uh, some druid mythic path. It's a normally true neutral or stuff like that. Mm. If we take this, this will probably destroy my love affair with him, my probable love affair with him. But I mean, let's let's look at it. I mean, we are Aeon now. This is unexpected. Are you tired of me already?
I mean, we could banish him and do the lawful thing. <laughs> I just said we will do the lawful thing next time, but we will lose him when we banish him. I'm pretty sure about that. So we will tell him this. Oh, you do know how to punish an innocent fellow. my natural state of serene idleness and instead you condemn me to more work. What a cruel, cruel commander you are. Okay, goodbye. I mean, I really don't want to lose him. He's a really good um, healer. Let's see. Um, there is also um, Camellia should be here. And I should probably try to talk to her as well. And she's also a bad person. Mm. I see the luminescence of your soul. You have broken the laws of Galarian. How absurd. Please see such tasteless chat. For oh, I'm truly offended by your words. Okay. That's strange. I mean, it wouldn't be that bad if we lose her. Although, at the time, she's the only one who can mm, open chests and banquet. Mm. You are so my duke. My cat is. What do you think of the powers you received from me? People of noble descent grow accustomed to ample opportunity. The powers I received from you are useful, but I see no point in treating them with excessive piety. Hmm. Okay. I think you can also have some... Uh, some romantic relationship with her, I found out in the internet. Yeah. Okay. So you are not really interesting. I walk into this house and plunder it. Why not? We are so slow. This is so, so stupidly bad. How did come to hmm. Yay, some food. Some things we really don't need because no one of us can make potions. Or scribe gold. Hmm. We probably should sell all this. So where can I take a nap? In Citadel? I don't know. Where do I sleep? Not in prison, I hope. At the inn, probably. Hmm. Let's walk to the Citadel then. Should we? I mean, in 
being naked was in near the throne room where you could sleep because I just saw if we didn't sleep. We just skipped the day without sleeping. Hmm. But we have to sleep because we want to get rid of the hmm, death door condition for a camellia. Will only be gone if we sleep here. Oh, we are so slow. Yeah, my dog, Noki egg. <laughs> No, you're so cute. Probably somewhere around here. Like there's a bed. Do. Here before. Okay. What's this? As you are leaving, you notice movement in the reflection of the mirror that stands in the room. As you come closer, it seems as if the reflection of the mirror's surface is changing, revealing a starry sky. Maybe it's a trick of the lights illuminated by the glow of a door. But no, your eye is drawn to a cold white star within the depth of the mirror's surface. Right fitting light pulsates in perfect time to the beat of your heart. Even your breathing attunes to its steady rhythm. The outline of your reflection has not disappeared and you can see if you it, if you focus your gaze, but unlike your reflection, does not blink. Where you would expect the eyes to be, there are only nebulous galaxies. The galactic spiral spins slowly. They have no need to hurry. You need you feel the magnificent it barring staring back at you with only the smooth surface of the glass between you. Rub your eyes, touch the mirror, check to see if the mirror is enchanted. Hmm. Let's touch the mirror. You touch the mirror, it's just glass. But where it to but where it to crack you feel as if the endless cosmos wrapped you into its embrace. Hmm. Let's see if it's enchanted nothing unusual about the mirror. It has always been the ear used to check one's appearances before meeting with guests at ordinates. The being that is looking at you from the other side of the glass is also using it, but has not changed the nature of the mirror itself. Seems entirely normal. Hmm. Let's rub the eyes before going away. No matter how hard you rub your eyes, the reflection in the mirror does not change. This is reality and it is not the first time you've you've felt the gaze of it. You experienced it before when you encountered the Eon. Now, if it feels, there is the typo, as if you are once more subjected to the vapor. Look in the eyes of the Eon. You recall the gaze of the creature you encountered in Canabras is what you see now, just a shadow of a dying Eon or a glimpse of a new one born somewhere in the multiverse. Feel connected to this being. Maybe the Eon, the timeless judge, is slowly fading away and has come to give you some final guidance. Who are you? 
This question doesn't even need to be asked aloud. It hangs between you and the Aeon unspoken yet, understood by you both. <clears throat> I am an Aeon, the embodiment of the law of the multiverse. I preserve the balance of worlds and planes, strengthening the fabric of existence. I want to bring order and peace to this world. Yeah, lawful neutral. The reflection moves its lips, but you don't have to lean, although it's... Uh, there is also a balance between chaos and law, so probably really true neutral. Reflection moves its lips, but you don't have to lean in close to hear what it says. You already understand the words sound in your head, loud and clear. You feel an ache in the back of your mind, like the kind you get from drinking cold water on a hot day. But this sensation is freeing. You feel that for a moment, in the midst of being even chaos, a door to the world of absolute order has been opened. Whoever takes on the burden of being the supreme judge must swear to the purity of their intentions. Who but us can endure such a burden? Swear and embrace the power of the Aeons, the only power that is able to save Golarion. Words come into your mind, scattered first, and forming themselves into meaningful lines. But is it an O? Maybe you need time to think. Probably it was good that we talked to Camellia and Darren before. <laughs> uh, probably after we swear this oath, we'll have to get rid of them. words of an oath are forming in your mind, each one burning with certainty and purpose, but where did they come from? The lips of the reflection seem to move even before yours do, as if the aeon itself is prompting you. I, Slatibat Fast, commander of Dresden, will, by the will of fate and the power of yours, others shall others call you commander and speak of your responsibility, but this is the first time you have spoken it aloud yourself, and the words take on a new weight. The voice of the Aeon, an eternal being, echoes your words and support. If the multiverse itself accepts you, accepts your oath. I swear never to deliberately overlook unlawful Eh, no. Not lawful neutral. I swear never to cover my ears when I hear lies. I swear never to keep silent if my words would bring justice. Turn away, don't look. Better say nothing. This doesn't concern you. These are things you have been told your entire life. Now, repeating the words of the oath, you realize that you have detested such qualities since childhood. Your whole being revolts against it. For it is not in your nature to look new. It is not in your nature to remain silent. This is why you have been given the right to enforce. Yeah, whatever. This is, uh, this is the reason why we have uh, these two around us. Is this chaotic evil and lawful good that's between us? I swear not to rule but to judge. I will not be the executioner but the executioner's sword. I will not enact punishment with malice or joy but only in the name of the law. I swear to, the, to be a pillar of stability and order. There is no anger and no joy. The weight of time has been lifted from the events of the past and the present, laying them bare before you. You see the truth undistorted by the fears and desires of a flailing mortal consciousness, as if the Aeon is sharing its infinite wisdom with you. And if I ever break my oath, may the Aeons, the keepers of order, punish me justly, and may my name be buried in eternal oblivion. This I swear. Okay. This doesn't look good. Your final words 
linger in the air, the mirror is silent, but you know that the multiverse has accepted your oath. The multiverse. Doctor Strange. Nothing will ever be the same again, and yet everything is as it should be. This feeling of certainty brings you peace, like a taut string that's been released. But something is stirring, constant and restless at the edge of your consciousness. Galarian is imperfect, Mendef is imperfect, Dresden is imperfect. This doesn't sound good. The blinding light obscures your vision. It's as if you are trying to peer past the light, lighted candle into the darkness beyond. These wandering lights are the souls of the guilty who have not been charged for their crimes. Some of the flickering lights are closed. Whatever else may be happening in the multiverse, there are those in Dresden who await your judgment. This doesn't sound good. Varys bows to you. She's a grim woman with a ragged scar that cuts it. He's wearing a black armband in a sign of mourning. Commander, I have a case for you to settle. My sister and I used to fight in the same unit. There was this shady fellow serving with us, Ramley. He was rumored to be a looter. My sister Cillian, Cillian was killed in the battle for Drazen, and a few days later I noticed that Ramley had her amulet. I cornered the little weasel, and he said that he and Cillian had been in love, and they exchanged amulets before the fight. It's a lie. He must be brought to trial. Love is complicated. Why are you so sure your sister couldn't have fallen in love with Ramley. Cillian wouldn't. She had a husband and a child. She was always talking about them, always writing letters. This doesn't sound good for Ramley. Um, things do happen in war. People get together, but falling in love with such a scumbag, changing amulets. No, that's not like my sister at all. She always said Ramley disgusted her, and I believe her. She wouldn't lie to me. Uh, okay, why are you so com confident this amulet belonged to Sylvan? It's not just a trinket from the market. Our father made it long, long time ago. So it's one of a kind. It may not be worth much, and it's not enchanted. But I can't stand to see it in the hands of someone like him. If you don't do something, I'll have to take matters into my own hands. This would be even worse. Why are there rumors that he's a looter? He's always selling something on the sly. Belts, boots, daggers. He says, I found it in my bag. Or, a friend gave it to me. But the truth as clear as day. No one's been able to catch him in the act, though. He must stash most of his loot away in some hiding place, because he only brings items into camp that he can pass off as, he, as his own. Okay. I'll help you. We'll make him show his true colors. Thank you, Commander. I'll go to Ramley and make sure he stays put into you until you come. Rumors say he can usually be found hanging around about near Dresden's prison. Okay. Good. Okay. Why why was this now? Didn't want to do this. I wanted to I'll sleep. That's probably my first Eon job. Let's see if we can sleep here. I mean, there is a bed. Yay, we can rest. Let's...
aussi. Uh, relative with one temporary hit point per level for a day. Godspeed salad. Interesting. So we need all this stuff also for the food. What does the Godspeed? Plus 10 movement speed bonus for a day. Moss potting. I think a moss provides you with a plus 3 cooking bonus on all skill checks for a day. Why should I need a plus 3 cooking bonus? Ah, on all skill checks for a day. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, let's have a hearty meal. Excellent. Yeah, uh, we will look at that only next time. I hope you enjoyed it. See you. Bye.